Okay guys, welcome to another Vaded Warp. This week I am looking at Palace Software. Now, <laughs> I actually recorded this video um, last night on Sunday night. I had it all finished and I was going to upload it um, tonight. But you know what, I think I'd actually deleted the file. So I lost absolutely everything. So I have literally just remade this. So yeah, always, always check before you delete files. Anyway, Palace Software, yep, um, when I decided to do um, Palace, I actually thought they'd sort of produce more games than they actually had. They've actually got quite a small kind of catalogue of games. They did uh, publish some games for other companies, um, which I haven't included in this. Um, so it was going to be quite a short video, so what I thought I would do, um, rather than just have four or five games and that would be it, I've actually taken a look at different versions of the same game, so we can just kind of compare and see what one looks, looks sort of better than others. But you can see the adverts for all the games that we're going to feature, including the mighty, uh, mightily uh, well ampled Maria Whitaker. Okay, to kick things off, this is the Secret Armour of Antiriad. It also seems to be known as Antiriad Elsewhere, but it's the same game. Now uh, this is the Amstrad one we're looking at. It was basically one of these sort of just run about, jumping on platforms, collecting things. Now we did have it on the C64 but if I remember really I wasn't overly keen. I was never really a, a big big fan of these kind of games on the, on the 8 bit, although they were hugely popular. It generally seemed to be more popular in the spectrum, but uh, yeah, I was never a big fan of them. I preferred more kind of arcade stuff, but yeah, I mean, graphics, graphically wise, it's really nice. Um, typical kind of Amstrad colour palette, very, very bright, sort of vibrant colours. Not a lot in the way of sound, though. I'm not quite sure what these things are. I don't know what that thing is at the top. And you seem to be able to throw... Is it, I was going to say bricks. You seem to be able to throw, I'm guessing, boulders or something. Mm, I don't know. Can you try and pick that thing up? Really not too sure. Now I'm guessing the idea of the game is uh, the secret armour of Antiriad. Probably a step for a hint there is to probably try and find said secret armour. And lo and behold, I'm guessing that's the secret armour. It's not exactly very well hidden. Hardly a secret. So let's see, how can we... Can we jump up there? Right, there we go. Right, how do we... Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, everything's coming to life. Anti rad suit active. Hmm, when you try and move, you instantly just come back out of it again. Not too sure. Right, this is the, the C64 one.
Why are you getting similar graphics? If anything, I'd probably say that the graphics are a wee bit more uh, better defined in this version. Oh, there's the secret armor again. I seem to find that one very quickly. Now, let's see, who can we get into it? Ah, now I notice when you go into the suit, you get this wee, it's like a wee power bar type thing on the right hand side. See the kind of circular thing. So is there something you've maybe got to collect? Collect things possibly. Now I notice one thing about this version: the sprites. There's some sprites which are multicolored. Then there's others like these two wee guys there. They're completely uh, monochrome. See, these guys are all... And that wee guy there has just appeared, he's kind of multicoloured and shaded. <laughs> and that thing there looks more like something on a spectrum. You know what, you'd always, you always get the feeling like they they ran out of time, and rather than, you know, to get the game finished, they just kind of, sort of, I don't know, ripped sprites from the spectrum version. I don't know, I might be talking complete bollocks, it's just, a, it's just an observation. Some sprites are multicoloured and others are uh, single coloured. Who knows? If anyone out there knows the reason for that, please put a comment below. Right, this one, if you can't tell, is the Spectrum one. Now, first impressions, it looks quite nice. It's obviously very, very, very bright looking. Um, the animation is nice. And one thing that's really nice to see is they haven't just gone for the monochrome graphics which a lot of developers seem to do they just used to always go for two colors and you could get really highly detailed graphics but what these guys here have done they've actually gone for quite detailed graphics but they've also each kind of individual sprite is a different color which is nice Ah, I seem to have come in a different direction. Now, can we get into this? So you'll see the wee circular thing at the sort of bottom right of the screen. When you go into that... Come on, there we go. Anti-rad suit. Right, it's powering up. Active. Now you can see a wee bit's kind of... appeared. I'm wondering if you've got to maybe pick up... You've probably got to pick up other bits and pieces. You can't even see me actually move. It's maybe not got enough power or something, don't know. Before anyone starts criticising uh, why I don't read instructions, anyone that watches the channel, has watched the channel for any length of time, will know that I really don't do instructions. I don't have the time to sit and read instructions for games, I just play it, plug it in and away I go. So sometimes I've got no idea. <laughs> Case in point with this one. So it's not bad, it's not a bad kind of RPG type thing. These were hugely popular back in the day. So that's the Secret Armour of Interiad. Right, now this is Cauldron. And this is the C64 one. Now I think the game actually, this game came out on the C64 first. And it was later ported to the uh, the other 8-bits. Amstrad, Spectrum, did it come out in the BBC? I'm not too sure. Now graphically this game is beautiful, it really is, I mean look at the colour, the, the definition of the trees, it's really atmospheric but there's one major flaw and that will become apparent very very quickly. If you look to the top sort of left of the screen you'll see a, you've got score then beneath that you've got magic. Now that is, yeah I'm down to 4%, zero, bang, that's one life gone. Yet your magic is basically your energy. Now when you're flying you lose 1% of your energy, I don't know, every couple of seconds. When you get hit, I mean look at that, I'm down to 19, boom, another life gone. You lose, I think it's 5% of your energy when you get hit with a baddie. And when you, believe it or not, when you actually fire to try and kill the baddies, you lose 1%. So that's me, that's me lost 3 lives already. Now I knew it was difficult, so I've actually stuck this on the uh, infinite lives. <laughs> because it's just, the difficulty level of this game is just ridiculous. And to my mind it's, it's spoiled what would be a really good game, I mean fantastic graphics, really nice, uh, nice atmosphere.
just too damn difficult. The sprites are excellent as well, really, really well animated. Right, I've picked up a green key and I'm trying to get in a blue door, so that's not really clever. Now, what you, what you when you land, you can only land where it's completely flat. If there's any background object at all, you just crash and burn. You can see here I'm down to 16, 14. 14, oh bang, there you go, from 14 to 0 in the matter of a couple of seconds. It's just the difficulty of this game, it's just, it's spoiled the game as far as I was concerned, which is a shame. Boom, there we go. Right, this is the Amstrad version of Cauldron. Quite similar kind of music to the original. Very nice. First time I've seen the Amstrad one. That looks really cartoony. That's excellent. There we go. We'll see how long we last. Right, I'm, I'm already down to 86%, so we'll see how long it takes to actually die. Now, you notice this one seems to be play a wee bit slower, which might actually make it slightly more playable. Yeah, you've actually got kind of half a chance to to dodge the bats in the C64 one. I mean, I think I was, I'd was i lost three lives by this point. Yep, I think this one, you can definitely see it's slightly more playable. And I would say the graphics are probably just as nice, actually. So, although this, that's a kind of regeneration point, although the Amstrad, the C64 one was the original, I'd probably see a like. Probably prefer this one. Maybe the graphics, the actual sort of the scrolling, the animations maybe slightly better than the C64, but this is definitely a lot more playable. Less difficult, anyway. So what I need to do is look for the yellow door. Hmm, that doesn't actually show you what colour it is. Even this sort of detail on the, the door as well is a bit more detailed than the C64 one. Whoops! Ah, damn it! Not a lot in the way sound, a wee kind of some atmospheric music might have been quite nice. That's one thing that the C64 did have, which was pretty good. Okay, right, this is the, the last version of Cauldron, this is the Spectrum one. A wee bit colour clash going on there, but, you know, what do you expect? And we'll see how difficult this one is, down to 89%. Not a lot in the way sound again, other than a little sound effect when you take a hit. It's really a really pretty game, it really is. All nicely hand drawn graphics. Which is the only way to do it back then, I think. <laughs> I don't think you had such thing as digitised graphics back in whenever it was 1985 or something. Ah, damn it! Now you've probably noticed the other, this kind of brush the side of the tree and it's instant death. You've got to make sure you're completely got a clear landing. You'll notice there in the meantime I'm taking a pummeling trying to get to that key and you can't, one thing you cannot do when you're on the ground is actually fire anything so you're just, you're completely exposed. So yeah, for, for graphics and sound, I'd probably go for the C64, but as an overall better game, 
I would have to go for the Amstrad. It's just it looks it looks really just as nice as the C sixty four. It's not got as good sound, um but it plays slower and for that it's a lot more playable. And the spectrum it's more playable as well. Um so yeah there you go, the original isn't always the, the best one. So that's a uh, cauldron. Right, this is Cauldron 2, and this is on the Spectrum. Now, if you thought that the, the last game was difficult to play, you ain't seen nothing yet, this is uh, <laughs> This game is just ridiculously hard, it really is. Basically, the thing that you control, you control the... Uh, I think you actually play the part of a bad, a baddie. You play the evil pumpkin. Now it bounces up and down, and you can obviously, you know, make it go left or right with moving the joystick, pressing, holding the fire button in, or I think you would keep pressing the fire button makes it jump higher. Um, but actually trying to judge, you know, how high you need to jump and that kind of stuff. So it kind of reminds me a wee bit like. Uh, what was that really old game in the Spectrum, the Flea, Bugaboo the Flea, yeah, it's, you kind of felt like you didn't have a lot of control over the game, and this game is exactly like that. <laughs> you can kind of influence it slightly, but it just bounces all over the place. Which is a shame, because if they'd made the, the pumpkin less difficult to control again, I think this would have been a, you know, so much better because it's a beautiful looking game. The graphics are excellent. It's got a really nice kind of atmosphere. And you'll see there. I'm trying to get up the top of the stairs, but just trying to get the the right sort of trajectory to get up is virtually impossible. It's bouncing about all over the place. So that's a Spectrum one. Next one up is the Amstrad. And there's a little hag in her bed. <laughs> Never actually noticed that. Ah, you'll notice it's a different screen you start on. I wonder if it's random. That's still a different screen from the, the Spectrum one. The Spectrum when you started with the, uh, the sort of skeleton thing. I mean, graphics are stunning. Look at the wee candles flickering away there. That's really nice. And it's just a shame as far as... I think in my mind they've gone and spoiled a gorgeous game with just making it too difficult. I mean, I'm trying to get down that that space, and I just can't physically get. I can't sort of bounce any less, if you know what I mean, to actually get down. And you've got that thing that immediately kills you. I mean, seriously. And to make things worse, you just get mocked by the, the witch at the top every time you die. Yeah, it's like playing a game of pinball almost. You've really got no control over where the thing goes. Oh come on! See, I'm just I'm just bouncing too high every time I go from one side to the other. I'm just I can't get down the, the space. No, I give up with this. <laughs> At least the spectrum is slightly more playable. Though. I think that was probably more down to luck than actual skill. One last go. Nah, anyway, right, this is the C64 one. Now this was the one that I played back in the day. Again, really, really nice graphics. Not quite as shiny looking as the Amstrad one. Again, it's got better, uh, better sound, which you would expect. Especially that sort of evil cackle when you get killed. And once again, it appears I'm completely unable to... I mean, <laughs> you've got baddies all over the place, you're just 
quite literally cannot get out of here. I think what I'll need to do is I'll need to go into YouTube and see if there's a, a playthrough, a speedrun of this game. I'd find it hard to believe that anybody could actually complete this game. It's just, well to my mind it's completely uncontrollable, which is a shame. I mean, I've got these kind of know, spells, whatever, but it doesn't seem to do anything. You know, if I could sort of shoot baddies, it might kind of help, but I have got no idea. <laughs> no, this is even more difficult than I remember it back in the day, and it was hard back then, but. Way! Come on, come on, come on! Ah, bollocks! Anyway, that's enough of that. That's Cauldron 2. Right, let's get some head slicing action. And this is a Barbarian, and this is on the C64. Now, this uh, review drew really highly in Zap. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's an amazing game. I remember when I first saw the saw this, I wasn't overly impressed with the, the sort of graphics. I just thought they looked a bit mm, I don't know. Just a bit kinda messy looking, but then when you actually look at it properly you realise it's just the you know, they've got the definition of this that the guy's fighting, so it's actually it's actually pretty good. Hey, there we go, and that's a that's why we've all played it. You get the wee green goblin thing kicking the, the severed head off. Next I believe once you uh, defeat so many uh, sort of adversaries, you eventually take on, I think it's some evil uh, wizard or something who fires fireballs. Now the the 16-bit versions of this were pretty good, I didn't actually feature them in this, I don't know why, I just kind of forgot to feature them, but uh, they're actually really good. I mean, graphically wise, yeah, they're maybe a wee bit better than, than the 8-bit versions, but the, where they really excel is the sound. They could also have digitised sound, so you've got, you know, proper sort of uh, sword on sword and a satisfying kind of slice when you, when you lob the guy's head off. Now, I was never particularly good at this game, and what I used to find is you could just actually hold the joystick to the left with fire button and you continually do <laughs> head chopping movements like that and you can usually get past about the first half a dozen guys but obviously not so much fun. So that's the C64 one. Next this one is the Amstrad. Again nice and bright. Maybe if anything slightly blocky looking graphics in that the Commodore 64 which is quite surprising. Hey! Boof! <laughs> you never get tired of seeing that. Now I think this game would be quite good fun playing it in two player. I don't think I ever actually played it in two player. It was always single player. And I always found it very, very difficult. This is the only way I could, you know, ever stand a chance of actually beating the computer was just to use the kind of the head slice move. This game is obviously uh, rather famous. It's famous for being a good game, but or I should say infamous, um, the advert, which you probably saw at the beginning, featured the, what was he called again? Uh, he was one of the, the guys that used to be in the Gladiators, which was a TV programme back in the UK, back in the 80s and 90s. Um, it was him and Maria Whitaker, who used to be a Page 3 model, and uh, yep, she was featured in the front, and there was a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of people getting very upset at the fact that uh, they were using sort of a uh, bikini clad buxom wenches to sell video games to kids but I'm sure as a, a teenager you weren't too fussed you were quite happy <laughs> now this is the spectre one if you can't tell um, I'm not overly keen on the, the purple backdrop but it looks completely different from the, the other two versions I mean the graphics are very very detailed and one thing I've noticed as well is the actual guy you're fighting has got a mask on whereas the, the two 8-bit ones I've just looked at, C64 and Amstrad they were just like copies of yourself, I think you had different shorts on different coloured shorts so this one does look a wee bit different but it plays really really quick, it's actually really nice Yeah, right, let's go for one more shot. And that's what always happens, you always get backed right into a corner, you always get pushed right against the wall. Hey! <laughs> no, we didn't want to kick the head off, I think the head went too far to the left. So yeah, it does. It looks different from the the, uh, the Amstrad and the C64. I'm not. Mm, I don't know. I wouldn't say. Although it's probably got better graphics, this one. I think I prefer the sort of the coloured sprites of the C64 and the Amstrad one. That's just a personal preference because I mean the graphics in this are actually really nice. So yep, that is a barbarian, and that is a specky one. Right, following on from barbarian, the uh, obviously following the success of uh, barbarian one, they did what most software companies do, and they released a sequel, and rather imaginatively called it barbarian two. But rather than sort of stick to the same uh, tried and tested one and one beat 'em up, they went for a sort of a it's not role playing, a sideways scrolling beat em up type game but rather than fighting one particular guy you're actually taking on different adversaries now I remember playing this on the I think it was the, um, the, the, the Amiga actually, I think I played it in that and I wasn't overly <laughs> avoid the pit of doom uh, yeah I wasn't a big fan of it I think I just couldn't figure out how to actually play it Whoa, now that's the guy that you normally see in the, uh, the adverts for it. That's quite impressive, actually. Now you'll notice I am going for the the single, the same move. <laughs> He's just swallowed my head. I mean that's quite impressive the actual size of that green thing, you know when you consider it's an 8 bit computer we're talking about here. You press it up makes you run, so I don't actually know the idea behind the game, no idea. I'm just running like crazy. Until somebody comes onto the screen to fight me. And we've got some kind of ostrich thing. Oh, what's that? I just picked up something. I've got no idea what that was. If you look to the top left of the screen, you've got the wee kind of wee baldy headed guy, and to the left of him, you've got a kind of energy bar. That's your uh, that's the enemy you're fighting. So you can see it's gradually coming down. Right, sorry, just kind of flicked rather quickly there. This is uh, Barbarian Two, and this is on the spectrum. Now again, it's going for monochrome graphics, which does give a far more detailed sort of sprite. The only thing is, when he's standing up there, his head kind of blends into the mountain in the background. Ha 
Uh, come on, what's next? Oh, it's big ostrich man again. Right, I see me have picked up that thing. I don't know what that is I'm picking up actually. Now the controls are slightly fiddly. To to kind of change direction, you got to pull down, and then to do this particular move, you got to pull down with fire button. That's why I kept kind of swapping directions all the time. Hey! Oh bollocks, I've got a giant fleet to contend with now. Right, kicking it in the face seems to be the... the best option, I think. Come on. One more, one more, there we go. Yep, what oh, happened there? No, it's another flea thing. Ah, it's all a bit monotonous to be honest with you. I'm not, it's not a particularly enjoyable game. I think the, idea, I think the only thing the appealing thing about this game is just to sort of get to see, you know, what the next body is. Right, this is the C64 one. Very distinctly C64. Nice use of colour. Graphics are pretty well defined as well. I don't remember seeing that bad thing, so that bad in the other versions. So I'm guessing it must be quite random as to what thing you're actually going to face next. Jump! <laughs> Whoa! Oh bloody hell. He's changed. Oops! I've hey, I like that. The animation's pretty cool. He's, he's seems swallowing my head and I wanna. <laughs> Oh, Christ, he's chasing me. It's a bit like fighting uh, Barney Bear. Especially this one being purple. Come on, have at you, you coward. Oh, it's a killer flea again. Right, and it appears that my... I'm trying to, trying to kind of hit too high, I need to kind of try and turn round. Ah, bollocks to this. Anyway, that's Barbarian 2 and that's the C64 one. Right, this uh, travesty is uh, Evil Dead. Now this game came out quite a bit after the film. The film was uh, one of these uh, infamous video nasties, which was it came out just at the point when you know video players became popular in houses. Um, this was an 18, and this was this was a real nasty, nasty video. I mean, looking at it now, it's absolutely tame when you compare it with what, it's got, what you've got now. But if anything, what's more terrifying than the film is this game. They tried to obviously cash in on it, but uh, the funny thing is the audience that it's aimed for never actually got to see the film. Well, that's probably not technically true because you just got your pal, your your pal who looked 18 to rent it from the video shop. But this is an abysmal game. You play the part of oh, I can't remember the name of the guy. Um, not Wesley. Basically, the idea behind the game is you and a group of friends go to this uh, abandoned log cabin in the hills. And what you don't realise is that there's actually the woods are possessed, and when you get into the house, they start changing all the, your pals into sort of zombies. Now the only way to destroy, the only way to actually kill them is to destroy the the book of evil, which is made with flesh. 
Um, <laughs> it sounds terrifying, but <laughs> the game's nothing like that. Now, it's such a frustrating game, this, because to try and stop the baddies getting into the house, you can close doors, but the problem is, they bloody just open up on their own. All oh, the doors have closed at the moment. Now these there, that's your one of your friends, that's your two friends you can see walking back and forwards aimlessly. Now the doors open. Now the most impressive thing about this game is the little swinging chair outside. The funny thing is, I remember getting this game and being genuinely, oh, slightly apprehensive about playing it because I knew that the, the video game uh, the film was such a kind of video horror, but uh, yeah, it's it's just an atrocious game. One thing you may notice as well is you can't actually uh, walk sideways diagonals, you can only walk up, down, left or right, which makes for a very, very clunky kind of game. So, try and close the gate, cl close the door, come on, close the door. Now, I've got no idea how how you to kill baddies. I think you've got energy. In fact, ah, there you go. My energy is at 5,000. And every time you... Every time you have a brush with one of the nasties, whether it's a severed leg, severed head, whatever it is, your energy just depletes. Ah, so you start off at 10,000 energy, right, okay. I don't know if... Can you pick up energy, extra energy anywhere? I'm not too sure. And I think the dotted lines, I think that's a window. And I think if you pick up, like, a weapon, like, if I pick that spade up, I think I can then use it to, to kill a baddie. But the problem is, it's just completely random. The baddies just continually keep coming. So it's, it's, it's not a fun game to play at all. Yeah, it's just you're wandering about aimlessly trying to avoid the baddies and due to the really clunky controls that is nigh on impossible. So I've closed the window, I've closed the door, but you'll soon see there you go, the ghost has just opened the door, so it's utterly pointless. So that is the evil dead. Now one quick anecdote about this, the Spectrum one, when this was released in the Spectrum, some clumsy fool at Palace actually included the full game of Cauldron on the B-side. So Spectrum owners were basically getting the Evil Dead and Cauldron for... They were getting Cauldron for free. Two games for the price of one. And apparently that was a big fuck up. So Cauldron never actually sold that many games because they didn't make any money for... Um, based on the Spectrum version because somebody had actually accidentally put the, the full game on the B-side of this game. The only saving grace for the Spectrum owners it meant that when they paid out money for... Uh, the Evil Dead that actually got a really good game in Cauldron. So, yeah, there you go. This last game, guys, this is Rim Runner. Um, I bought this game back in the day and I gave up very quickly. I just found it too difficult. Now, it kind of reminds me... Oh, nice wee sound effect when he whistles. It's kind of based on... looks like Mario and Yoshi, actually. Um, yeah, it kind of... Reminds me of a sort of defender type clone. You've got the wee radar at the top, and you're basically just shooting things. And I don't know. Do you actually clear the screen at any point? I'm not quite sure. It reminds me of Defender crossed with uh, Revenge of the Mutant Camels by Lamasoft. The way you kind of fire diagonally to the side. I mean, graphically, it's really nice. The animation and things are excellent. Nice parallax scrolling. But I didn't play it for very long. I just found the game... I don't know, I found it boring, actually. I just found it quite dull. I don't know what that thing is there. You can't see me kill it. Come on, there we go. Back on my trusty mount. So that's it, guys. Uh, that is the end of the video. That's the last game. Um, if there's any company you want to see featured, please put it below. And as usual, guys, thank you very, very much for watching.